Having trouble passing in college football 25? Whether you're throwing too many picks, or taking too many sacks, This is the video for you. So if you guys want to see 12 tips, tricks, and cheats to become a better passer, stick around after the intro. The if you guys are looking for fast, cheap, reliable coins for your college football 25 team, check out my coin sponsors at MMOXP and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. The champ is here! Welcome back, money team. This is Mad Money Shots. Never the college football 25 cheese, as always. In today's video, I'm going to tell you guys everything you need to know about being a better passer. But before I do, if you learn anything from this video or you just want to help this channel out, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section. If you need more help, you can check out my ebooks at madmoneyshot.com. Links in the description or the top pinned comment for more help. Now, before getting into any of these tips, the first thing you want to do is make sure you have the right passing type for you. To do that, you just have to hit the pause button. And at any point in time in any game mode, you can go to options and you can change this in the settings and now we'll bring up your game options i already made a full video about all the advantages that can be had in this particular section especially on the defensive side of the ball so if you guys want to check that out i'll have links in the description as well as on screen at the end of the video but i'm going to mostly focus on this tab here the passing type under passing mechanics there's a lot of different things you can change here but i pretty much only change the passing type now once again, this is based off of what type of player you are. If you played Madden for the last uh, couple of years where they've had placement and placement and accuracy, I'd fully recommend sticking with that system. That's what I'm doing. But if you're new to sports games, you might want to stick with the new revamp passing, which is essentially classic passing with a better arc and a visual bar that shows you how powerful you're throwing the ball. For the purpose of this video though, we're going to stick to revamp passing because I already did a full breakdown of placement and accuracy. Once again, links in the description as well as on screen at the end of the video. Next up, I'm going to start off in the huddle. Before you pick any play, you want to make sure to set your audible plays, which can be done simply by hitting the left trigger or the L2 button and allowing you to bring up this screen here to pick four different plays. Now, it doesn't always save in College Football 25 as they seem to be having some issues, but if it does save, make sure you give yourself a nice uh, blend of passing plays and running plays to try to beat every single coverage before you ever pick a fifth play which should be different from any of the plays in your audibles as it'll give you five play options at any point in time the first thing you want to do the second you come out of a huddle is try to read a defense this is something you should do in every single play regardless of whether or not your opponent is using the new coverage cell system but they might not be bluffing you so always try to read the defense i'm going to give you guys a really quick tutorial on that even though i made once again a full breakdown video which i'll have links in the description as well as on screen at the end of the video a real quick and easy tutorial when it comes to reading a defense is you always want to look to the receiver side that's because programming is different when it comes to tight ends you can see on the receiver side the cornerbacks about five yards off the line of scrimmage that's typical of a cover two defense the outside cornerbacks will always be the five yards off the line of scrimmage but when it comes to the tight end side since they're slower a lot of times they'll program the cornerbacks to be closer to the tight ends because it's not like there's a lot of tight ends that are fast enough to run past cornerbacks so anytime you see a five yard off the line of scrimmage outside cornerback you know right away it's going to be a cover two if it's a cover three typically it's going to be eight yards off the line of scrimmage and if you have a single high safety look like this you know it's going to be a cover three very easily other than that if you have a cover four you'll have that same eight yards off the line of scrimmage look but often the safeties will be at different depths you'll have one at about 12 one at about 10 that's pretty typical of a cover four defense uh, when it comes to man coverages overstorm brave is easy uh, any type of man coverage you're going to see that these safeties are typically around 10 yards off the line of scrimmage or less any look like this this is the only defense that has a look where the safeties are so close to the line of scrimmage uh, this is going to be an obvious cover zero when it comes to cover one hole that once again have that out that eight yards off the line of scrimmage outside look but they'll typically be more uh, man aligned if you see that compared to cover three a lot of times especially in tight condensed packages the outside cornerback will be kind of like this cornerback here he'll kind of be outside the receiver because he's more concerned with getting to the area but since on the other side the cornerback is to the or the receivers to the boundary the cornerbacks to the boundary so you don't necessarily see that so one of the better ways to tell that is with tight condensed packages but this is another scenario we'll have to make a post snap read you won't necessarily know the difference between a cover three and a cover one hole with the exception of the fact that that cornerback in the slot is down in the receiver's face which you won't typically see in cover three so that's probably the biggest tell when it comes to the differences there uh, and then last but not least we have we'll have to switch defenses entirely but we have cover two man uh, which is something that has a unique look once again 
where basically you have all of the cornerbacks pressing right in front of the receiver's face. No other defense has them so close in line of scrimmage. So if you ever see cornerbacks right in front of the receiver's faces, you know it's going to be a cover to man. And then you also have split defenses where you'll have the cornerbacks at different depths. Now, this might be a little bit hard to tell once again because we're in the two tight end set, but the cornerback on the left side is eight yards off the line of scrimmage, and the cornerback on the right side is five yards off the line of scrimmage, letting you know that they're playing two different zone coverages. So on the left side, we have cover four match, and on the right side, we have cover two. In these scenarios, you're going to want to try to break the defense in half. You're going to basically focus on one side. Uh, in this scenario, it would be best to focus on the cover two side and try to beat that, but we'll go over that in a minute as well. The next thing you're going to want to do in every single play is manage your pass protection, which you can access by hitting the L1 or the R1 button, and that'll bring up your pass protection options. Now, there are more pass protection options than this in the hot route menu, which I'll go over in a minute, but this is probably the most important thing you're going to want to use on every single play, as doing things like full slides and half slides can dramatically change where you're running back specifically blocks on any given play, as well as your offensive linemen. Using this and things like double teaming and IDing the mic can pick up just about any single blitz in the game. If there's a cornerback coming off a of blitz, you're going to want to use ID the mic as that gives you the option to basically ID just about anybody on the entire defense. Regardless of how well you set up your pass blocking, how you move the quarterback in the pocket is going to dictate pressure more than anything else. As your job as a quarterback before you throw the ball is to keep an eye on the angle of the pass rushers compared to the angle of your linemen. If you have a pass rusher that looks like he's going to get around one of your offensive linemen, it's your job to change change where the quarterback is standing so that offensive lineman can get back into the play. So with this defensive tackle getting past my guard, it's my job to step up in the pocket and reposition myself so that the blocker is once again in place to hold the play. So just make sure to be constantly reading the angles of your blocks. And when you throw the ball, make sure that you always have your feet set before you throw it. Next up, I'm going to go over post snap reads, which is something you have to do every single play based off the fact that they have the new coverage system and they don't really show you a previous play in any of the game modes. So if you want to find out what defense your opponent is running, you have to typically watch the safeties. On a play like this, you can see how there's two single high safeties. It could be cover two, could be cover two man, cover two zone, could be cover four, although the cornerbacks are down pretty far. But basically, if you watch those safeties once the play starts, if they drop back, straight back, it's going to be a cover four. If they drop to the outside, it's going to be a cover two. And if one of them drops down, the other rotates to the center, you know that's going to be either a cover three or a cover one. Now, at this point, you have to decide whether it's man or zone, and that's a pretty easy way to figure it out. If the defensive players are following the, the receivers, it's a man coverage. But if they're not, if they're more concerned with dropping to a space, it's a zone coverage. So you can see the drags here. If it was a man, the defenders would be all over them. But since they're rotating and dropping to space, it's going to be a zone coverage, and you know exactly where to go with the ball. Now that we're reading the defense, if your opponent isn't hiding their defense with the coverage shell system, or if you start to notice they're running the same coverage over and over again, like cover three, cover four, you can start to diagnose plays for that. And I'm gonna show you guys a really easy setup to beat zone as well as man. Now when it comes to man, you can pretty much put your receivers on anything. Speed out routes, in routes, curl routes, uh, comeback routes, post routes, slants, drags, pretty much any one of these will beat man coverage, deep crosses, all this. There's probably half of this will beat man coverage because all you really need is somebody that's, you know, basically running across the field. All these routes pretty much will beat man coverage at this point. So that's not something I'm spending a ton of time on. But when it comes to zones, a very good zone coverage concept that's been in the game for a very long time, where all you have to do is have three receivers on one side of the field. They can be tight like this, or they can be spread. Uh, it can be a trip set. It doesn't really matter. You just need somebody on a streak to pull back the deep safeties. They call it a pull route. And then you're going to need somebody underneath. And that'll give you a high-low concept between the A and the RB route. After this, all you really have to do is watch what the flat defender does. If they drop down on the A receiver, uh, which they didn't do there, I can just take that underneath for a try to get a catch and run. Uh, if they drop back, you want to throw it underneath. If they drop down, you want to throw it uh, over the top. But like I said, all I'm really watching at this point is that defender. He's kind of doing a pretty good job of covering both. If that's all I have is a five yard check down, I'll take that. But if I want to try to get that RB route open, I can custom stem that receiver deeper. About five yards ought to be enough. And now he should be able to get open over the top. To access the custom stem, all you have to do is select the receiver that you want to extend once again and then hold the LB or the uh, the L1 button. And you can change the depth of that receiver. Now it should be a little bit easier for him to get open over the top. 
although we didn't get a great pass, but we still dotted it up there on the corner. And you can see how you can use that concept for easy yards just about all game, regardless of what your opponent does with their uh, their zone drop depths. There is a maximum amount that they can go on a zone drop depth. It goes from zero to 30, where this can go anywhere I want to go. I could be at the one yard line and have them breaking at the five from the other side of the field if I wanted to. And there's no zone drop depth that can match that. Next, I'm going to go over the different passing types as there are a few different passing types, starting with bullet passing. Bullet passing is probably the one you're going to use the most. You can see if you hit that perfect yellow, you're going to get a, a max strength bullet pass every time. When it comes to uh, holding that button a little bit too long though, you'll see how you'll get an inaccurate red, which will sometimes make the receiver come back to the ball. Sometimes they'll drop it more often, things like that. But it's something that doesn't, it's not game breaking. It's something that they wanted to make sure that people could still have success. But you definitely wanna aim for that yellow every single time. As you can see, it makes the passes much easier. Next up, I'm gonna show you guys a lob pass which is something you're only going to want to do when you're throwing the space. This is a cover one. So if my running back gets around his defender and there's nobody over the top, I'm just going to want to lob this up by lightly tapping the button, not letting the blue meter fill up too much. And you can see how you can throw the space very easily. You should also be using the left stick on every single play to pass lead the ball away from the defender, often allowing you to come back to the ball and make catches that you wouldn't have made otherwise. Next up, I'm going to go over the types of catches you can do to maximize a play, starting with the rack catch. If you're throwing the space once again you're going to want to hit the x button or the square button if you're on playstation for a catch and run animation as this will give you a speed boost allowing the receiver to accelerate through the ball often resulting in a much bigger catch and run but things like rack catches and lob passes are things that are typically only done in space as you can see if i try to do a lob or a rack catch with a defender in the area a lot of times it's going to result in a knockout or an incomplete pass so in throwing in tight windows like this between zones, you're gonna to wanna to do a safe catch, which you can once again do by hitting the air X button on Xbox or PlayStation. You can see it will cause the receiver to shield the ball with his body and get down so that the ball can't be knocked out from oncoming contact. If your receiver is running a little too close to the sideline though, you're gonna to wanna to hit the A or X button to do a safe catch and they'll do a toe drag animation like this to try to keep both or at least one foot in bounds to make sure that they catch the ball. And the last type of throw is throwing the ball away. If there's not a play, try to get out of the pocket and just push in the right stick or the R3 button to throw the ball out of bounds. If you're close to the red zone, you can do this from here as he'll just throw the ball out of the back of the end zone. But just make sure that you're not rolling in a direction to the point where the quarterback might throw the ball short of the line of scrimmage or it will be a penalty. So that's, that's the video. If you guys learned anything from this video, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. If you want to see more tips from the videos that I mentioned throughout, they'll be popping up on screen. So just click the links. And until next time, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.